Hi everyone, how's everyone doing here today? And today I wanted to talk about something based on some recent events and some other stuff that happened a few weeks back. And it relates to guns and changes. And I want to be a little more thorough here because it covers a lot and I'm going to reiterate some of the other stuff because I did get a little feedback and it provided a little bit more insight and it all boils down to solving the issue at hand. Now, um, person, as you already know, Charlie Kirk, who's one of these far-right podcasts and everything, he had some type of uh, presentation where he was talking to a small audience uh, with some other guests, and his basic conclusion was is that he thinks the endless gun violence is okay, because it's the cost to have the Second Amendment rights, and it was a pretty disgusting uh, presentation that he did. And what's more sickening is that a lot of the audience members, like, gleefully applauded him. Um, yeah, um, school shootings are okay because, you know, your Second Amendment rights are essential and we don't like to deprive people of rights. Uh, unless it's a woman's right to choose over her own bodily anatomy, then, you know, uh, that we can't allow. Or it's the First Amendment rights for drug performers uh, to read to children, you know, freedom of speech. But, I mean... Again, it's freedom for me, not for the uh, approach, and uh, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. So, I would wonder, and I don't know what Charlie's um, family status is, I, I'm assuming he's married with one or more children, and if his wife were taking his, his son or daughter or his children to school, and a uh, shooter uh, entered the uh, scene, and took them out along with other lives of children, I don't think he would have the same uh, gleeful approach to it as well. And let me be clear, I am not wishing violence on anyone. There's been way too much of that already, but it just goes to show how deep down he doesn't care. He's just making bogus excuses. And the fact that people applauded is really twisted. And if I would love to see him express that same uh, concern or is about, about people's rights, to some of the parents of children who died in recent shootings, whether it be um, you know, Uvalde, Parkland, or the one uh, or the uh, shooting that occurred in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. So, and like I said before, this story is like really depressingly familiar, and you know, I still don't see any changes. Now, some of the things that people suggested, and I'm going to give a little more insight into it. Mind you, I'm not an expert. I'm not a lawmaker. Okay not a gun expert so I'm not expressing any solid opinions just some personal views of my own some of you may disagree and that's fine and I'm looking for feedback you know that's why I chose to make this video because of some of other recent incidents which I'll get into in a moment and one person suggested you know 10 day uh, background checks you know to red flag for mental health and uh, if the person that's purchasing a gun is a felon uh, some have talked about increasing the uh, age limit to 21, which I believe it is now 18. That may vary per state. And I know uh, background checks also aren't always the same from one state to another. Now, as far as solution goes, you have to ask yourselves, the lawmakers that you support, whether it be, you know, the president, you know, your state governor or whatever uh, senators or other uh, congressmen in your district are, are they really trying to solve the issue? Okay. And um, just to give you some ideas, uh, some people have uh, talked about like possible solutions, like as far as mental health issue goes, is that a concern? Absolutely. I said that before and I still agree. It should be addressed. Now as far as a background check, talking about a person's mental fitness, some say that wouldn't work because of uh, HIPAA restrictions. And I understand the need for privacy for a person's medical records. So I'm not suggesting uh, offer uh, you know, personal records to a gun retailer. They're not doctors, they're not gonna know what to do with it. But maybe have it so that there is some type of red flag that says, due to medical conditions, which we can't go into any detail, but that this person cannot be allowed to purchase a weapon of any kind. Why not something like that? You know, and uh, some of the other uh, excuses I've heard is that, well, you know, I believe one person said uh, a hammer 
has been known to cause more deaths than I believe it was uh, shotguns. He was relating to a specific type of firearm. I'm just talking about firearms in general. Now, that's an argument we've heard time and time again. Sure, uh, I can kill with a hammer, with a 2x4, with a lead pipe. Even uh, smaller, more benign objects like uh, a fork, a butter knife, a simple pen. But here's the issue. Um, those items were meant to be tools or supplies used to build things or utensils that you use to eat or write with in the office. Okay? They weren't made to be instruments of killing. Now, could uh, I go to a school or a public area with a hammer and start swinging at people? Sure I could. But I would have like le less likely to do a mass killing because people would try and stop me. Because it's a lot easier to stop somebody with a hammer or some other miscellaneous object than with a firearm. And somebody have made the approach about uh, automobiles too, like automobiles can be used to kill people. Sure, but at the same time, you still need to get a license. You still need to, when I did it, back in my time, I'm sure it hasn't changed that much, but you still need to study the rules and regulations of the road. You need to pass a written exam, and then you have to learn how to actually operate a vehicle, in which case you have to take a road test and prove that you know in a reasonable or a thorough enough how to operate that vehicle safely. Now some places may do that with guns, some don't, but I don't think that's a bad idea. I don't see any problem with educating someone, yet I know there are some places I could walk into, just flash my license, and purchase a certain type of weapon with little or no training. So, and guess what? Yes, I know they have some permits for carry, but what we're seeing now in some states, like in Texas from Governor Abbott to Florida to Governor DeSantis, they have recently passed bills that are loosening these restrictions and stuff. So. You know, there are some people that are looking for a solution, there are some that are looking to not solve the problem at all. Because uh, for either they're gun enthusiasts, you know, they're all about the Second Amendment, or s even so, some of them are in the pocket of the NRA and gun lobbyists. In which case, they're not looking for a solution. They are getting blood money and that's all that they care about. So. So. Here's the way I boil it down to, and it's really very simple, is that when voting for lawmakers, because I'm not a lawmaker, there's nothing I can do, but I can look at the people around me in my area and ask myself, are these people really looking to solve an issue? Because here's the bottom line, I'm okay with people owning guns. I have friends, I have family members that do own them, and some are law enforcement and military, or some were you know, whether you currently are a former, when they have the guns, they use them responsibly. They keep them locked away, uh, whether it's for hunting, or just go to shooting range, or for home protection. But like when they're at a shooting range hunting, they're careful how they use it. Um, they don't leave it so that anyone uh, living with them can easily get a hold of it, you know, unless, and again, some of them I know have actually trained and practiced how to use the weapon. Okay, there's a certain knowledge base that they have, so, they just want to use it for the intended purpose and not see anyone get hurt. And when I say this, the lawmakers, whose side are they on? Are they on the side of the children? Do they want to protect the children? Are they on the side of the guns? Are they on the side of the killers that they want to help, you know, these shootings continue? And I am by no means, I know that's a really twisted way of looking at it. I'm not implying that there are some lawmakers, particularly on the right, who are all like, Second Amendment enthusiasts that they, uh, you know, long for school shootings to happen. Obviously, they don't want to see that happen. But, like I said, some of them are uh, in bed, you know, with gun lobbyists, and they're not going to do anything. The uh, Tennessee lawmaker that was there on doing the last shooting, I'm trying to get his name here, hold on. Tennessee Representative Tim Burchett, pardon me if I'm mispronouncing names, he feels there's nothing that can be done, you know, that it's a freedom issue, and, uh, but he's also very outspoken against drag readings, so I guess he cares about the children just in a certain way. And he homeschools his, uh, his kids. I don't know how many he has, one or more, but uh, guess what? 
he's not going to do anything, so, and inaction is definitely an action. So as far as I'm concerned, he's on the side of the shooters, he's not on the side of the children. Okay? You can't just say, I'm going to do what's right for my family, but disregard anyone else. You're a lawmaker. You have a job to do. So, unless you're willing to do it, step down. You should resign. Or, in that case, I would say when it's time for his re-election, vote against him. Vote him out. Okay? Because he's not going to do anything to solve the problem. And the solution lies in the key. He used to give you some other uh, examples of things that have gone on. As I said before, mental health issues should be addressed. Uh, Trump, during his administration, he did an Obama law preventing mentally ill people from owning a gun. Now, why would you do something as foolish as that? Okay? And he claims he's not in anyone's pocket. I don't buy that for a second. So guess what? He's not looking to protect the children. Okay? He's not. Biden passed a bill that helped address uh, mental health in schools. I forget the exact name of the bill. But when it was passed, only one Republican voted in favor of it. The rest didn't. And yet, you see all these Republicans screaming about mental health issues. As I said before, I agree, it should be addressed, okay? Because it's not just about one aspect, but they're not willing to uh, bring or vote on laws that are actually going to help the mental health, mentally ill people, you know, even in schools. So, obviously, they're not looking to solve the problem, they're just making excuses, okay? And as I said before, I can't stress this enough, no one wants to take away anyone's guns. Nobody's going to go door to door and start confiscating guns. I know some people like to talk tough and say, yeah, let them try and take my gun. No one has ever, I have, to my knowledge, I have never seen or heard of anyone proposing that. Okay? It's just not going to happen. And there's always going to be a Second Amendment. You know, as I mentioned in my previous video, one friend said, if you do away with the Second Amendment, you'll solve the problem. But that's not going to happen either because there are too many people out there who are just clinging to their guns, no matter what. And I don't think they want to see school shootings any more than I do, but they just can't let go of their guns. They can't let go of that Second Amendment. Okay? So. Like I said, are you on whose side are these people on? So. Oh, and another thing. Biden, he was pushing for assault weapons. And he was also doing it, there was a part in the bill that said it's not going to confiscate anyone's uh, guns for those that own assault rifles, all right? So I can at least say Biden is trying. Maybe he's not succeeding, but the effort is at least there. And as I also previously said, I don't expect there to be one solution that's going to make this uh, problem go away or greatly reduce the school shootings, okay? It is not a simple problem to solve, given all the other factors involved. And you... As long as you've got lawmakers that are willing to try, that are actually making efforts, a little at a time, collectively, can bring down the number of shootings, I believe. And I'm sure others would want that as well. So. And just to give you an idea of some of the other extremes, as if the school shootings weren't enough, we had some recent incidents that occurred that are rather shocking. And mostly it's just nothing more than a simple misunderstanding. Allow me to break it down. If I'm a little off on some of the details, you can Google it, but at least you get the idea. Kansas City. A black teen was shot by an 85-year-old white male simply because he went to the wrong address. I guess shoot first, ask questions later was his motto. Okay? Two cheerleaders were shot for entering the wrong vehicle in uh, Texas, and the shooter was 25. Uh, to be honest with you, years ago I actually did that once. I was talking to someone, I was a little distracted, or I think I was on the phone, and there was a vehicle in the corner of my eye, very similar to mine, and I reached to open the door and I looked across and there was a person in the driver's seat that I didn't know, so obviously I made the wrong vehicle, for which I immediately apologized and told him, I'm really sorry, I thought this was my truck. You know, closed the door and that's all it was. Harmless mistake. Upstate New York, a 20-year-old woman was shot because her and her boyfriend drove into the wrong driveway. And in North Carolina, a person of mine by the name of William White was shot and his six-year-old uh, daughter was wounded due to uh, gun fragments um, because the basketball rolled into the person's yard. Wow. Next thing you know, uh, you're going to tell me a basketball might potentially kill someone? Okay. And these are the shootings that I know of, that we've heard the news. It's a lot of more of the shootings that you don't hear about. And it's not just in cities, it 
can pretty much happen anywhere. So that's why I say, and all these instances were just nothing more than just simple mistakes where a little communication. Somebody came to the door, you don't know who the person is. You see that it's a black person. Well, you don't have to open the door. You could have just said, sir, how can I help you? You would realize later it was nothing more than a harmless mistake. Somebody pulls into your driveway. Do you go for a piece or do you stop and ask them? And in some instances, like I said, the uh, shooter, the black person, was an 84-year-old person. Well, for those of you who like to lean on the uh, car excuse about how cars can uh, kill people too, well, as I explained before, but these women also, when uh, certain people I know reach a certain age, they're not permitted to drive cars anymore because it's not safe for them. There's slow reaction time or they have vision problems or they're suffering from dementia or some other case that would impair their driving abilities. Therefore, put making them a hazard not to themselves, but people around them. I've had that happen in my family where we've said this person can't drive anymore because it is not safe. And yes, I would say in addition to registering guns, just like a uh, registration for a car and your driver's license, you have to renew it every now and then. And that means, in some states, that means uh, get tested to make sure, you know, you're of good health and of sound mind. Why not have uh, something like that? Would that not help reduce the shootings? There are ways that this problem can be solved. Now, you might look at some of the uh, possible solutions and argue against those. That's fine if you think I'm wrong. What are some of the solutions then, if not that? You know, I'm all ears. Leave something in the comments. But if nothing changes, if you have a bunch of lawmakers that aren't going to do anything, then the shootings are going to continue. Okay? So whether they feel it's a hopeless case, which I don't believe it is, or whether they're, uh, like I said, in the pocket of gun lobbyists, well then, they're not going to do anything. And that means they're not on the side of the children. They're on the side of the guns. We need to vote these people out. I don't even believe in giving them second chance. Even if they say, oh, well, no, moving forward, I'm going to do something. No. You had your chance. You could have passed laws or you voted against laws that would have helped resolve the issue. Instead, you know, you did it to protect the guns. So, and in all the, the recent instances, I just said, what if these people didn't have guns? Well, then I'm willing to bet those people would still be alive because I can't see somebody running out of the house chasing a kid with a hammer or going after people in a car with a butter knife because they drove in the wrong driveway. Or somebody taking a lead pipe and going after a little girl just because the basketball rolled in his yard. Again, we can work to solve these problems and still keep the Second Amendment rights, still let responsible gun owners keep their guns, still allow gun retailers to sell their merchandise, as long as it's done to those that are responsible and kept out of the wrong hands. I know some of you are going to bring up the illegal guns too. Yeah, that's a problem. And as I said, I don't expect there to be one solution or a handful of solutions that's going to make this all go away. That would be amazing, but that's just not going to happen. I have to be realistic as well. But if we make little changes here and there at a time to, you know, keep the guns out of the wrong hands of people, see to it that mentally ill are getting the treatment that they need so that they don't get their hands on guns and, you know, that retailers sell more responsibly, then we can bring down the school shootings, okay? but it's up to us to make that change, especially when we're dealing with lawmakers that are either inept or willing not to do anything because they're corrupt or they're in their pockets of the wrong people. Again, do you want to protect the kids or do you want to protect the guns? I want to protect the kids. I don't even have kids. I'm thinking about your children out there. Relatives, family of yours, there are ways we can solve this, but we got to work together to solve it. So, anyway. I really hope you understand it's important that you do.